Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Today, this is exciting. It's about chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, let's, let's get into this. What does the CDC or the ultimate health authorities have to say about this? Well, for one, chronic fatigue syndrome, more than a million Americans has CSF. Now, the illness strikes more people in the United States than multiple sclerosis, lupus, and many forms of cancer. Now, chronic fatigue syndrome occurs four times more frequently in women, and keep in mind of that statistic, uh, occurs in people in their 40s and 50s, uh, in all ethnic and racial groups around the country, and at all income levels. Now, how do you diagnose if you got chronic fatigue? <laughs> Again, this, according to the health authorities, the CDC, you must have four of the eight following symptoms. Um, uh, post, uh, post-exertion malaise lasting more than 24 hours. That means if you work out, you're done for a day. Um, unrefreshing sleep. Uh, is that one of the recommendations? We always say change your sleep patterns. Um, short-term memory issues, muscle pain, uh, pain in the joints without swelling or redness, uh, a different type of headache, new pattern, severity, lymph nodes swollen at the neck, an armpit, sore throat, reoccurring. Uh, n- now, <laughs> I love the diagnostic challenges. Um, for doctors, choosing um, a diagnosing chronic fatigue can be complicated by a number of factors. One, there's no lab tests, there's no biomarkers. Fatigue and other symptoms are common to a lot of other different illnesses. So for some patients, uh, chronic fatigue uh, may not be obvious to the doctors that they're ill. The illness has a pattern of remission and relapsing, and symptoms vary person to person, type, number, or severity. And according to the Mayo Clinic, There is no single test to confirm a diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome because the symptoms of chronic fatigue can mimic so many other health problems. You may need patience in waiting for a diagnosis. This is driving me crazy because when when you look at this, the body is suffering from a tissue production problem. They're not regenerating. And these health authorities aren't recognizing that. Okay, now. Again, let's go back to the health authorities. The CDC, managing chronic fatigue syndrome can be as complex as the disease itself. There is no cure, no prescription drugs have been developed specifically for chronic fatigue, and the symptoms can vary a lot of the times. Uh, Yeah, no uh, prescriptions are specifically for it, but you can bet they're promoting a lot of medications. Now, again, according to the CDC, despite a vigorous search, scientists have not yet identified what causes CSF? Okay, in a few minutes, you're going to know the cause. Um, well, a single cause for CSF may yet to be identified. Another possibility is that CSF has multiple causes, conditions that have been studied um, to, to determine if they cause or trigger the development of CSF, um, including infections, immune disorders, stress, trauma, toxins. It, it's, it's interesting. In chiropractic philosophy, um, we have always taught that all diseases are from the three T's, uh, trauma, toxins, and thought. I'm glad the CDC is finally catching up to 100-year-old philosophy. Well, the CDC goes on to say, um, the central nervous system plays an important role in chronic fatigue syndrome. No kidding. With physical or emotional stressors, which is commonly reported has a pre-onset condition in CSF patients, alters the activity of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis. Now, this leading to altered release of corticotropin releasing hormone, cortisol, and other hormones. These hormones can influence the immune system and many other bodily functions. Now we're getting to it. Disturbances in the autonomic regulation of blood pressure and pulses have been found in chronic fatigue patients. Absolutely it is. So let's look at this. When, when we have that automatic nervous system, and what is um, chronic stress and chronic fatigue? Well, you've got a choice. When you are confronted by stress, you have two options. Do you fight? Do you go against it or run away? And this activates a certain a, a cascade of symptoms in the body. <laughs> okay, 
Yeah. Um, my oldest boy makes these PowerPoints, and this is the scariest slide. He knows it scares me. Yeah, he's a shit sometimes. Okay. <laughs> so let's look at what just happened. Okay. Unless you love scary looking clowns. First off, your amygdala was activated. Now, this is the emotional processing center of the brain. It interprets sounds, images, perceives danger. Instantly, it sends a signal to the hypothalamus. Now, this is extremely important because the hypothalamus, figure you have two chemical communicators. You've got hormones, which are a chemical communicator, and then you have a nervous system, which is an electrochemical communicator. The hypothalamus has its foot in both. So the amygdala perceives it, then it sends a signal over to the hypothalamus, command center of the body. Now, this controls breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, um, dilation and constriction of the blood vessels communicates with the autonomic nervous system. It activates that sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system, suppressing the rest, digest, and repair. The automatic nervous system, okay, also called autonomic, but it does things that you don't need to think about, okay? It, it regulates kidney function. It regulates digestion, everything. But it only has two switches. One switch, rest, digest, regenerate, repair. And that's the parasympathetic. Now, this is actually located in the neck and in the pelvis. Now, that is responsible for regeneration of tissue. The sympathetic nervous system is located in the rib cage and top of the lumbar. It's also called thoracolumbar. So you have these two switches. Now, the body can't have both of them on at the same time. So you are in, in the stress state or regenerative state. So does that mean that if these people have a problem with regeneration, they may have a problem with the cervical spine or the pelvis where the regeneration or the parasympathetic nervous system is. Could be. You know, it's, it's like that white elephant in the room. How come the health authorities ain't recognizing it? Now, let's look at the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, okay, these babies are the pharmacy of the body. Now, they, do, they produce every glucocorticosteroid, minocorticosteroid, sex hormone that your body requires. The adrenal glands utilize cholesterol as the building product for these. So we call them the pharmacy of the body. Now, when these, that hypothalamus stimulates this and gets those firing up, number one, heart rate increases, blood flow to the muscles, heart and other vital organs increase, pulse rate increases, blood pressure increases. Remember, you're running away from danger. Um, breathing rate increases, bronchodilation, the air tubes open up, oxygen is sent to the brain to keep it alert, sight, hearing, other senses become sharper, triggers release of blood sugar from fat storage. So, you know, you can see this when you're looking at this sight, hearing, and other senses. Do you know how many patients I get that have phonophobia? They can't stand sound. They have headphones on. They're coming in with dark glasses. They can't stand the light. That's because they're in an adrenal dominant state. Um, the second stage of the stress response, the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Now, this relies on hormonal signals, signals to keep the sympathetic nervous system active if the brain continues to perceive stress. So if you're in a chronic stress, that chronic sympathetic nervous system is going to be activated. Um, so look at this. Hypothalamus releases corticotropin-releasing hormone. This triggers adrenal corticotropin hormone releasing from the pituitary. This triggers the release of cortisol from the adrenal glands. And then when the threat passes, cortisol levels fall, and then the parasympathetic or regeneration nervous system can kick in once that stress response is, is relaxed. Just think of the deer. Deer's hanging out with his buddies, eating some grass, digesting. The lion! Okay, and then they see the danger. All of a sudden, blood supply to the gut shuts down, pupils dilate, ears become um, uh, more phono or sensitive to the sound, and they run away from the danger. This is why you require the elevations in heart rate and, and digestion shutdown. And we are, in modern society, under chronic stress. And there's only three of them. There's physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. But this is a chronic state of stress. So what happens under chronic stress? Well, you have um, cortisol that's going to be released. And if you're in a chronic state, you're going to have adrenal fatigue because the adrenals are producing the stress hormones. But what does cortisol actually do? In short term, it keeps you alive. Long term, 
it diminishes cellular utilization of glucose. So blood sugar levels increase. This is one of the biggest contributing factors to the moronic type 2 diabetes. They, these people are just under chemical stress and physical stress and emotional stress. So blood sugar levels increase, decrease protein synthesis. You get less blood supply to the gut. Increased protein breakdown. So you're talking muscle wasting, um, leading to osteoporosis, demineralization of the bone. Interferes with skin regeneration, healing. Because remember, you're in that, you've got two switches, regeneration or stress. You are in stress, so your regeneration, forget skin, forget bones, forget muscles. They're getting get broken down. Shrinkage of the lymphatic tissue, that's part of your immune system. Diminishes lymphocytes, numbers, and functions. And so what does chronic stress in the adrenals do? Well, um, body temperature is going to be altered, uh, nervousness, anxiety, depression, memory loss, weak immune system, inflammatory conditions, cognitive impairment, difficulty in regulating weight. Uh, you're looking at everything, insomnia, autoimmune disorders. All of these are linked with a chronic adrenal dominant state. And it's not the adrenals. The adrenals are responding correctly based on their environment. And then once you, just like you have the autonomic nervous system, you've got the sympathetic and parasympathetic, you've got adrenals and thyroid. So when people are misdiagnosed with a low thyroid because they're in an adrenal dominant state, because when you're in stress, that thyroid's going to be suppressed. So what happens? Long-term depression of the thyroid, depression, heart disease, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, inflammatory bowel, autoimmune conditions, memory problems, lethargy, low libido, uh, infertility, gum issues, fluid retention, swelling. Again, that's from the protein synthesis, acne, eczema, skin conditions. That's from low stomach acid. Um, it, so other effects of chronic stress, um, your digestion system, you've got four times less flow to that digestion. And you are only alive because you get the amino acids from the proteins, fatty acids from the fats, and usable sugars from the carbohydrates. You shut that down, you're not going to have the raw materials, so your body can't regenerate itself. And this is where you get the decreased metabolism. You get the decreased enzymatic output, decreased nutrient absorption, decreased oxygen to your gut, elevated cholesterol levels. Why? Because you need the cholesterol levels. When a doctor says, oh, you have high cholesterol. No kidding. That's my body responding to the chronic stress. Um, because you need that cholesterol as the precursor to every glucocorticosteroid, minocorticosteroid, and sex hormone that your adrenal glands are going to make. Elevated triglyceride levels, um, decreased gut flora populations, okay, increased food sensitivities. And as even the CDC says that, that we are under high stress. No kidding. And this is way before 2020. We can't even talk about that. <laughs> Uh, 50% of Americans under moderate stress, I highly doubt that. It's more likely 75% based on the political, social, and environmental. But we boiled down all the stressors to three factors. Physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. Realize all three of those activate the same system. So when you're under physical, chemical, emotional stress, now add in to this the chronicity of this. So you get adrenal fatigue. Um, thyroid uh, hyperstimulation, pancreatic overload, hormonal imbalances, then add in a nutrition deficient diet, sedentary lifestyle, toxic environment, processed foods, antibiotic and, and medical interventions. I mean, this is a recipe for disaster. Let's break the cycle. Let's get out of this. Your body is responding correctly based on the environment. It's not a disease attacking you. It's a body doing everything it can to adapt to those chronic stressors. And if you're looking for your body's ad ad adaptive response in, in trying to call it a disease like the health authorities, forget that. That's insane. Your body is responding correctly. So let's take it step by step what you can do. Number one, vaccines. We can't even say the name. Antibiotics, medication. Those are all alter your metabolic response. Look at environmental toxins that I'm talking electromagnetic fields. Um, you're looking at different gases, off gassing, and all the toxins, soap, shampoos. Make sure your soap is it doesn't have triclosan in it or antibiotics, non-organic or genetically modified foods. Your diet should only be what your great-great-great-grandparents ate. Organic, healthy, seasonal. 
nutritional deficiencies, obviously, because if you're in stress state, you can't absorb them and chronic stress. So that's the first step. When we put up the five keys to health, and I put these five keys to health for the last 20 years on every PowerPoint, and we're talking, this is how the system works. Proper nerve supply. Why? Because we're looking at autonomic dysfunction and adaptation. Regular exercise. Why is that important? because you regenerate everything. Proper nutrition, this is how you get the raw materials to regenerate. Sleep is when your body regenerates. And prayer and meditation. You can see most of these are on the CDC site. They say, well, a lot of this stuff is effective. So let's look at the proper nerve supply. Let's go into detail in this. Number one, you've got two communication pathways. you got the endocrine, okay, and you've, or hormonal, and you've got the nervous system, the electrical. The nervous system controls every function in the body. Wait a second, does that mean the nervous system controls hormonal and endocrine function? Yes, it does. A neurologic imbalance leads to disruption of the endocrine function. Now, chiropractic here is essential um, to stimulate the nervous system. I wouldn't put stimulate. The chiropractic removes the interference to that nervous system's ability to adapt, repair, and regenerate. Now, according to the Journal of Upper Cervical Chiropractic Research, 76% of those patients reported a mental and emotional improvement as well as positive changes in stress, life enjoyment over a period of several months um, following the chiropractic care. What are the benefits? According to the Journal of Spine, Journal of Vertebral Subluxation Research, JMPT, um, the benefits, what is it? Well, alleviates pain, boosts productivity, improves quality of life, improves cognitive function. Because remember, the HPA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, that hypothalamus is directly connected to this nervous system. Um, Reduces dependency on medication. Yeah, we're in a sick society. Improves the quality of sleep, reduces your stress, boosts your immune system response. Just look at this. Look at these two patients here. Okay, they're standing up straight. Okay, the body is supposed to be straight. So when you're looking at the one on the left, yeah, there's a lot of traumas, evidence of past, but you look at that picture on the right where the person's completely off center. This is, in both cases, it's abhorrent hypothalamic stimulus. And this is a big deal. Your body's going to be responding to the significant physical stressor. This is why you've got to see what you're working on. You got to take x-rays. Then proper exercise. What does exercise do? So we go with the five keys to health. Exercise. Improves the quality of sleep. Why is sleep important? That's when your body regenerates. Help you maintain a healthy weight. Improves your resistance to infections. Why? Because you're sweating. You're breathing hard. You're working hard. Okay. It improves your brain function. You're talking neurogenesis. Okay. Prevents and relieves chronic pain. If you move your joints, the joints get healthier. Improves your emotional health. Lowers your risk of every disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. Everything gets reduced. If you're exercising correctly, yeah, you ought to try walking in Bangkok, okay? 90 degrees, you're getting, uh, it's like walking in a sauna. Freaking love it, okay? How breathing affects your health, okay? Reduces physical and mental fatigue. That's why we talk about diaphragmatic breathing. Improves circulation and cell oxygenation. Stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. I just got rid of not just carbon dioxide, but a hell of a lot of cellular exudates. And I alkalinize my system. How cool is breathing? It acts as a pump to massage the internal organs. That's why we talk about diaphragmatic breathing. The action of your diaphragm helps put lymph through your system, eliminate toxins, waste, strengthens your immune system. And the, uh, the CO2 waste is eliminated directly through the breath. I know. Can you imagine putting a covering on and rebreathing in your, your waste products? Proper nutrition. Now you're looking at serotonin, but neurotransmitters are produced in the gut. Now they found out probiotics, prebiotics, lactobacillus uh, rhamnosus has been shown to lower stress hormone um, corticosterone, resulting in reduced anxiety and depression. Um, Bifidum bacterium longum has been shown to normalize anxiety-like behavior. I mean, we do tons of, of studying on changing the gut flora and it's called the gut brain or enteric brain. So you've got to look at that gut. Pray over the food, baby, it works. 
Eliminate processed foods, especially highly processed foods such as sugar and oils and fats. Add in healthy organic plants um, and healthy fats, healthy meats, healthy animal products. Um, Coconut oil is fantastically good for you. Fermented veggies, probiotics, prebiotics. Vitamin D is essential. Essential. You're talking for neuroreceptors. Um, elevates the concentrations of the serotonin in the brain that when you're looking at vitamin D deficiency, um, a skeletal osteoporosis, depression, um, autism, brain dysfunction, Alzheimer's, chronic fatigue, cardiovascular diseases, all types of cancer from vitamin D deficiency, premature aging. aging. So ideally, if you're closer to the equator, okay, in and this is 20 minutes of exposure of, of chest, arm, and face. And this is going to be fantastic. Problem is, the majority of our planet doesn't have those sources. So you can get the um, ultraviolet and infrared lights that you can have that we recommend. But also, look at healthy fats. Look at fatty fish. Good source of vitamin D. Look at um, uh, d- 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 fermented foods such as cheeses, raw dairy. Um, it's fantastically good for you. Omega threes, sardines, mackerel, anchovies, incredibly essential. Low levels of omega threes. You're looking at memory, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia. So healthy fat intake is going to be the key. Minerals. Without minerals, you can't utilize vitamins. Let's just look at one of them. Magnesium. You need this for heart, muscle, kidneys, brain. 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium. You're looking at human proteins have over 3,000 binding sites for magnesium. Um, and calcium, vitamin K2, vitamin D have to be in, ba- in, in a balance with magnesium. Uh, so where do you get it? Um, look at bananas, dark chocolate, avocados, um, and nuts and seeds. Fantastic source of magnesium. And it activates muscles and nerves, creates energy, helps you actually break down and digest protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Magnesium is the building product for RNA and DNA. That's right. I said dark chocolate is good. In, and it's it's got to be organic, though. <laughs> I just love, love when chocolate can be a vitamin <laughs> or a mineral. <laughs> but it activates neurotransmitters like serotonin. Now, what happens to magnesium deficiency? You're looking at neurologic disorders, fatigue, fibromyalgia, seizures, and this is the source of it. Why isn't the the health authorities recommending checking your nervous system? Um, They know what's in the stress state, okay, and looking at nutrient deficiencies, um, at depression and anxiety attacks for magnesium deficiency, bowel disorders, poor sleep patterns. Then let's look at the other key to health, sleep. REM state of sleep is the most important part in your body's regeneration. And if you're not getting that deep states of sleep at night, uh, you will have chronic fatigue. Now you have a natural circadian rhythm and you go through these 90 minute cycles where your body is in a coma. When you complete that circadian rhythm cycle, your eyes open and close. So your sleep environment has to be completely dark. Light is your body's cue to get back up. So limit your exposure to computers, TVs, cell phones. They emit a blue light, which interrupts melatonin production. Expose your body to natural sunlight as much as you can. And take steps. Look at our sleep restriction videos. They're amazing. And then prayer and meditation. It's every study that shows prayer is involved. Your body heals faster. Uh, Now, meditation can actually alter structures in the brain you're looking at hippocampus you're looking at pineal gland all of these structures change in people that meditate and pray regularly now it includes any repetitive action that requires higher cognitive function the, the now researchers at harvard yale and mit our data suggests that meditation practice can promote cortical plasticity in adults in areas important for cognitive and emotional processing as well as well-being no kidding Daily prayer meditation. I, I, I look at uh, Jim Rohn said said a, a prayer meditation motivation should be done like bathing daily. Okay, <laughs> daily prayer and meditation. 
neurolinguistic programming. I love that. The I am exercises. Emotional freedom technique is also wonderful. The Demartini breakthrough process. I absolutely love that. So find what works for you. I like all three of these. So can you see when we talk about that your body is adapting, you don't have a disease. You either developed it, earned it, or are experiencing physical, chemical, emotional stress. So you have to address the underlying factors. Is your body building cells faster than they break down? Beautiful. You got health. If you're breaking down faster than you're, you're building, beautiful. You're suffering from chronic stress. At least you know the cause. So look at the nervous system. You got to look at your autonomic nervous system. Are you building healthy cells? Look at regular exercise. This means resistance, aerobic, fantastic. Okay, look at proper nutrition. If your man makes it, you don't eat it. So you're eating like your great-great-grandparents, sufficient rest. This means resting and sleeping is one of the most active parts of your day. This is when your body regenerates. And then prayer and meditation, do it like bathing daily. Okay, it helps get your connection with God. Now, make sure you paste, post all your questions down below. We'll get to as many as we can. And of course, in our environment today, I got to divide them up. And then we'll get to them as soon as I can. And God bless you all. I'm telling you, my friends, you were made in the image and likeness of God. Stay healthy. God bless you all.